from the Accident and Emergency Department, the team are ready for their next case. Let's meet him. At the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, six-year-old Hassan is in accident and emergency with a problem. What is it, Hassan? Hassan, can you hear me? What's the problem? The stone is stuck in this ear. Pardon? He said he has a stone stuck in his... I know, I know, I'm joking. And the stone is in your ear because... I put it in my ear because it was too noisy in PE. So how did it happen? Hassan was in PE class. That'll be why people are running then, and swimming. Well, it is a PE class. Hassan doesn't look very happy though, does he? That's because it was really noisy, far too noisy in fact. And the louder it got, the more fed up he became. I'm not surprised with all those aeroplanes. He just about had enough when he looked down and... Saw some earmuffs? No, when he had a brilliant idea. He picked up a stone and put it in his ear. Job done, no more noise. Only it wouldn't come out, of course. Not the best idea you've ever had, Hassan. I told the teacher that the stone got stuck, but she couldn't get it out. Time for an expert, I'd say. Enter Dr Sheila Begum. She'll help our Hassan out. How big was the stone? Uh, just, just small. Just a small one. OK, and which ear is it in? This one. The right one. Oh, OK, or, or the left one. Hang on a minute. We seem to have a bit of confusion. It is this one. <laughs> Never mind. Dr Sheila will work out where it is. Yep, I can see the stone. Looks like Mum was right. They always are, Chris. What I can see is a small black stone, approximately five millimetres, in the external ear canal. Now, if you're wondering where that stone has gone, your ear has three different parts. There's the inner, middle and outer ear, connected by the ear canal, and that's where her sandstone is stuck. I'm going to try and take it out. OK, it shouldn't hurt. Is that all right? OK. Hassan lies as still as, well, a stone, as Dr Schiller uses a special medical instrument to carefully retrieve the stone so that it doesn't cause infection. <laughs> and there we go, a blink of an eye and it's out. I'm quite happy with his ear, looking at it after taking the stone out. I can hear better now. No surprises there, then. Maybe earplugs are a better bet in future, eh? And now to our lab, where we put our bodies to the test to show you how your body works. Ah, that really hurts. Just don't try anything like this at home. Today, it's travel sickness. Now, don't worry. Zahn's not attempting to dance. He's spinning on the spot, but it is for a reason. Inside his inner ear, Zahn's got tubes full of fluid that send information to his brain about balance and movement. And when I stop, the fluid keeps moving. And this fools his brain into thinking he's still moving. With the fluid in Zahn's ears telling him he's moving, but his eyes telling him he's still, his brain is totally confused. And the result? I feel a bit sick. If you feel sick in a car, that's because your brain is confused too. As you travel, your eyes notice everything passing by quickly and tell your brain you're moving. But because you're sitting still in the car, your ears think you're not moving at all. And these mixed messages don't just happen in cars. But I'm about to take travel sickness to another level. This aerial display team specialises in aerobatic moves that will be way more confusing for Chris's brain than when I turned on the spot or you travel in a car. <laughs> do I have to do this? Yes, Chris, you do. Meet Mark Cutmore. He's the pilot who's going to take Chris up for a spin. You might think it's an odd time for a spot of lunch, but that Sarni should help to settle his stomach for the flight ahead. I just wonder if I'm going to be seeing the tuna and sandwich again over the cockpit window in a few minutes. We'll soon find out. Safety gear on, it's time for Chris to take his seat. A sick bag. We call it a comfort bag. A comfort bag. <laughs> Come on, Chris, up you go. And they're off. Chris is travelling at speeds of up to 250 miles per hour, and so far, he seems to be doing OK. But let's bring on the crazy moves and see how he copes once his eyes and ears start confusing his brain. <laughs> this is a very unpleasant sensation, you and me. 
I'm not meant to be upside down. Yeah, I'm fed of my stomach. The tuna sandwich! It will stay down. Now, in a situation like this, clearly Chris's eyes can see he is moving, and the fluid in his ears is moving too. So why does he feel sick? Oh, wow, I have no idea what's going on. Well, there are so many different movements happening at such high speed. His eyes and ears are failing to send the same messages at the same time to his brain. They're out of time with each other, and that's why he feels sick. Uh-oh. <laughs> As we touched down, I was definitely feeling the tuna sandwich returning for revenge. I mean, at the end, I did feel sick, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I was very pleased to be back on the ground. At least you've managed to keep your lunch down, though, Chris. But if you get travel sick, you can stop your brain getting confused. Don't look down and try looking out of the window at a fixed spot on the horizon. This will mean your eyes and ears are sending the same messages to your brain and you shouldn't feel sick. In the emergency department, doctors and nurses need to act fast. Especially when strange things like this happen! At Alderhay in Liverpool, waiting with his dad is five-year-old Peter. He looks fed up. What's the matter? I hurt my ear. They saw a bit of sticking out and it's a bit, a bit of swelling just behind his ear. See what you mean, Dad? That is sticking out. How did this irritable incident happen? It was lunchtime at school, and Peter was tucking into... A cheese sandwich? No. Beans on toast? No, Zand. Fish and chips? I love fish and chips. No, Zand. It was chicken. Mmm, yum. That's a lot of chicken. Yes, but as Peter was eating, his ears started hurting. Oh, no! And then it started growing. Whoa! Like Jack's beanstalk. Zand, this is Peter's story, not Jack's. Anyway, it grew and grew. No, come on, Chris, stop it now. It wasn't that big. OK, OK, just kidding. But the pain did become so bad that Peter couldn't eat his lunch. Ouch! Time for Dr Ashvin Luximon to find out more. Where's the head? Here, this here. Dr Ashvin takes a closer look at Peter's ear. Does it hurt when I press? Oh. Your head's there? Yeah. Yeah. And is it hurting inside your ear at all? Like... Uh, no. no, just outside. Okay. So what's the doctor's diagnosis? He's quite uh, tender to touch just behind his ear, which is where his mastoid uh, bone is. So we just have to rule out something potentially quite serious, such as mastoiditis. Inside your head, the mastoid bone sits behind your ear. Sometimes it can get infected with bad bacteria. This is called mastoiditis, and it can become serious if not treated quickly. Peter's got his own ideas about what might happen. Did you just chop my ear off and another ear? Did he just say chop his ear off and put another ear on? Did you just chop my ear off and another ear? Yep, I don't think we're going to need to do that. For you. For you, indeed. Are you ready? Little bit coming up. Peter's having a blood test to help the doctors decide what's going on. Oh, God, high five. Oh, come on, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm high five room with us. Great work, Peter. After a restless couple of hours, Dr Ashvin is back, but the results of the blood test are inconclusive. It still could be mastoiditis because it is swollen and tender there. OK. OK. So Peter's blood results came back as unclear, really, so we're going to keep him in over the weekend and admit him for IV antibiotics, which should clear up any infection. So off Peter goes to the ward. See you in a bit, fella. The good news is, after a couple of days, the antibiotics have worked. And that's what a normal ear should look like. A needle in your hand, didn't he? It's going to be a needle in your hand to make me better. He's got to take the antibiotics orally. Uh, so when he gets home, just carry on with that for seven days. And hopefully he should be uh, back to normal within a couple of days. Mm -hmm. OK, I hear you. Bye! Bye. And now to our lab, oh. where we do incredible experiments. Oh, there you go. To show you how your body works. Just don't try anything you see here at home. This is a tiny camera. I'm going to look inside Chris's head with it. Now, you must never put anything in your ears or you could cause permanent damage. We can only do this because we're doctors. Oh, that's great. That is Chris's eardrum. Lovely. OK, Chris, what I want you to do is close your mouth, 
Plug your nose and now blow out gently. Oh, that's really good. That's lovely. So what you can see there is Chris's eardrum bulging. Now, the eardrum is a very thin membrane which acts like a drum. That's why it's called the eardrum. It vibrates when sound waves hit it, but it has another important job. It protects the very delicate middle and inner ears behind it. But there's something else lurking inside your ears that we want to show you. Tell you what's on, give me the camera and I'll have a look at your ears. Can you see that gooey, yellow, browny, crumbly stuff? That is Zahn's earwax. How much do I have? A lot more than me. That's great, because earwax is in our ears for a good reason. But what is earwax? And why do we have it? Well, we're going to show you. Yep, I can see right through to the other side. What? Really? Well, how many fingers am I holding up, then? Three. Wow. Didn't think that was medically possible. Now, look, that is a good sample of your earwax. It's not pretty to look at, but it is brilliant stuff. Earwax is actually a type of sweat. Some people get more than others, just like some people sweat more than others, but everyone has it. When the earwax is produced in your ear canal, it's runny, but it dries out as it works its way out of your ear. This takes about a month, and it's helped along by you yawning, chewing, chatting, until it flakes out of your ear naturally. So next time you get told off for chatting in class, you could always say you're trying to work out your earwax. Zond, what are you doing? I was just tasting it. I can see that, but why? I guess I just wanted to know what it tasted like. Well, what does it taste like? Actually, it's not very nice. It's very bitter. And that's because earwax is made up of around 40 different substances. The main ones are fatty acids and cholesterol, and none of them taste very nice. Plus the fact that it's been in your ear for about the last month. Anyway, now we know what's in earwax, what's it for? Well, to show you, I've got a model of Zahn's ear. There we go, Zahn. Whoa! It's amazing. Hello? Hello? It even sounds like me. Anyway, in the air around us, there are lots of particles of dust and bugs and other stuff. So for this experiment, I'm going to need some giant particles to go with Zahn's giant ear. But as we don't have any giant bugs or dirt to go with the giant ear, these polystyrene balls will have to do. Now, when air passes around us, some of these dirt or bug particles could get into our ears. Watch. <laughs> With everything else supersized, we thought we'd go for a supersized gust of wind, too. Here it goes. <laughs> See how many went through the hole? If this was a real ear, all the dust and dirt particles that went through would have clogged up the eardrum and damaged the inner ear behind it. So here's the only problem with this otherwise amazing model. It doesn't have any earwax. So let's smear an earwax-type gunk in there and see what happens. We're coating the big ear with a layer of sticky yellow stuff, a bit like the wax in your ear, and you'll see how it protects your delicate eardrum and the inner ear behind it. Okay. Ready? Here we go again. Oh, that's amazing. That's great. Look, loads of them have stuck in there. That's what happens every day in your ears. Any unwanted specks of dirt or bugs that get blown near your ears get stuck in your earwax and then moved out of your ear. Which means your eardrum and everything behind it stays safe. The other great thing about your earwax is that the acid in it deters bacteria too, so it keeps infection out. So although it might taste horrible to Zand, it also tastes horrible for bugs. Our next patient was expecting a normal day. But he's ended up in hospital. This is definitely an unusual accident. In the hospital waiting room is five-year-old Harrison with his mum. He's here because... Is he too tall? No. OK, why then? Because I have something in my ear. Oh, do you know what it is? No. Are you sure? A chickpea. A chickpea? OK. How on earth did it end up in your ear? 
Harrison was at school inspecting a new display, the Animal Corner. Ooh, look at the cutesy wootsy piggies. Ah, oh, chickens. No, it was an African savannah zand. Really? What, with elephants and zebras in school? Yeah, that's right, Zand. Real elephants and zebras in Harrison's school. Duh, it was a model. Anyway, Harrison was busy checking it out when he noticed the desert sand was made out of chickpeas. He had an idea and picked one up. Don't do it! And he put it in his lug hole. Ouch! Rolling upside down isn't going to get it out, Harrison. Over to you, Dr. Catherine Rimmer. So what's happened to you today? Um, I have... Mm -hmm. Come on, spill the beans. You mean peas? A chickpea in my ear. <laughs> yep, he did say a chickpea. Let's have a little look, shall we? Dr Catherine uses a medical torch to look into Harrison's lug hole. Let's have a look inside. Oh, it's still there. So shall we take it out for you? That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? If you hang on a minute, I'm just going to get um, a special tool to get it out of your ear. A hoover? No, Zand. It's called a chickpea remover. We have them in our special store cupboard. Oh, of course, the famous chickpea remover. Home to the smallest bone in your whole body, your ears are divided up into three parts, the inner, middle and outer ear, connected by the ear canal. And that's where Harrison's chickpea is stuck. If it's left in there, it could cause an infection, so we need to get it out. Now then, what's going to happen, Harrison? It's going to be a little bit tickly, but it shouldn't be too uncomfortable, OK? And we'll get this chickpea out for you. So, with a special chickpea remover in hand, the doctor gets to work. So, nice and still yeah. for me, Harrison. And here we go. The chickpeas appeared to say hello. Oh, there we go. Oh, there yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. well done. <laughs> Hello, well. That's a bit of a big thing in your little ear. <laughs> wow. Now, there's only half of one in there. Just want to have a look inside and make sure there's nothing else inside. Dr Catherine has another peer in his ear to make sure it's all clear. Now, it's just caused a little bit of bleeding on the inside of the ear. OK. But there's no more chickpeas inside, oh, so it's only brilliant. a half one. You're going to have chickpea for tea? No. <laughs> <laughs> With his ear food-free at last, Harrison can head home. But leave your paws off the pulses in future, eh? Bye. 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 Mm -hmm.